this journey, we knew there would be surprises in store. We expected to meet new people and hear untold stories, to learn the truths behind the lore. Along the way, we discovered the hidden gems of Ireland. in Ireland on a shoestring budget. We did the best of what we could do with the equipment available at the time. Please be patient as we strive for improvements in future endeavors. Previously on Episode 5, Part 1. While at Spellman's Motel, activity included the cameras being affected, us being touched, turning around, nobody was there orb activity in our room, as well as the room across the hall from where we were. Even the lighting was affected. An EVP capture, Vanessa being overtaken to where I had to take it off of her, to the point that the power was even affected in the building. Strange knocks, movement down the hallway, and again, our camera being shut on and off by an unseen force. keep a lot of food in here okay down this corridor here in here we used to keep all these fridges we used to keep all our you know uh, for the for the breakfast we used to keep all the chips and stuff like that so a lot of the girls come here early in the morning and Susie used to come in here but when she used to walk in she swore she used to see kids looking down from up there yeah so, I yeah. can kind of see that yeah so I've been up there, foolishly, late, late one night myself, and in the very corner, um, I have a video of it, um, it looked like someone was like, you know, hiding behind one of these posts, you know, mm -hmm. like that. Oh. So. Do you not finish another one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> There used to be an armchair in this corner right over here. Okay. Can you, can you, where you at, Mike? You can move He's the, behind me. Can, did there used to be an armchair? That was a full setting room, yeah. Okay. You used to fall asleep in this chair? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Because when I come, John had already, he hadn't lived here in 21 years. Mm -hmm. No one's been in here. Okay. This is just a storage now for, yeah. for dirty mattresses and... This. Yeah, right over in here. This is just this, and this is the room that I heard the kids, that video I sent you? Yes. So, that's that one. So, I put all these up. <laughs> yeah. So. I just, I can't get past seeing, and I don't know, and don't tell me just yet, but I don't know if he... If he smoked or not, um, but there's what I'm seeing is a man in an armchair over here that would fall asleep with a cigarette in his hand. And I don't know if that's accurate or not, but that's what I'm seeing. Well, John did smoke, but okay. not in the 20 odd years I knew. Him. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he was a big smoker, but he never drank. I was showing Gwen here, this is what the girls used to see. And then people 
was the lens popping down. Well, no, I can understand that. Yeah. There was a different structure that was on uh, here that actually went a little bit further back. Oh, yeah. In this direction. Yeah. I mean, if you walk around here, you'll go into a dip. Yeah. Which would have been the old basement of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. More of a cellar, not big enough to well, stand yeah, up in. Yeah, cement, yeah. Yeah. Cellar, yeah. Yeah, more of a cellar, not big enough to stand up in. Um, and the uh, structure that stood here was two story. Yeah. 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 So what she seen, what, what was they that? Were... Do you hear that? Was, yeah. was that you bumping I into think, something? I think that, yeah. Okay. Okay. There was one night here we found. Uh, look, look, now look, look at this. Right, just look at this now. Okay. What the? Yeah, I know, yeah. That's the second fucking knife, Parma language, okay. that I found in here. Wow. The second, the very, like, Paranormal Energy Norway, uh -huh. we were in here just for a quick look around. It's blurry. And Dan, oh, Dan found that as well. Wow. And, that's just and sort of, obviously you took it out. Took it out, binned it. Okay. Now it was a different, a different knife than that, okay. I believe. But I'll, I'll, there must be photographs from their time, so I'll mm -hmm. get the photograph comparison. Okay. Now, there was a guy who broke in here. He's a heroin addict, and he let himself in here. Okay. In here. Okay. I've slowed the replay down. This is not a reflection, and no pictures or flash was being taken at this time. This is an orb. So, I don't know if I have a key for this. Um, when the girls would see the little ones staring down from up here, what they were actually seeing was them staring down from a banister. Yeah. All mm -hmm. oh, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The stairs actually came this direction. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't know because yeah. this, this is all I ever knew, you know. Yeah. And um, but no, it's weird. Like even like, can that light go? Can you go lights out there for a second? Yeah. Hang on. Give me just a sec. Sometimes you can go lights out. You can see well. That. You've, oh got, God. You've, you've got your... Just the night vision now. Sure. That ticking you can hear in the background is mm -hmm. the fuse box ticking. There's no, there's no electricity running through here. It's just the fuse box. Okay. I thought I did it. There was a lot of sickness on this property. A lot of sickness on this property. Um... It's it's weird because it actually feels like a what do they what do they call that um, dysentery? Oh yeah. Oh. Could be. Yeah. Dysentery. Uh, um, tainted water. Yeah. You know, see there. See just there that doorway there. That I thought I'd see a face come down there, mm -hmm. and I actually I never see shit like that. So that was really weird there. To be honest with you. Know? It was uh, just a st like an outline just there a second ago. It From the side, Gwen, if you want to come over. Okay. It wasn't until you turned the lights off. All right, let me see if I can. This side, Gwen. <clears throat> okay. And that side now. I'm not sure if it's the lights that are tricking my eyes or not. Can you look up without the looking at the camera for a second? Yeah, I can try. Oh, gosh. I'll pop, pop up your face there and have a look. So is that just my eyes or? Um, no. Coming from this area yep. right over here, leaning over. Yep. That is weird. Yeah, that is weird. But wow. just curious, but sick. It's weird. God, it's, that sounds dumb. Curious, but sick. Something sounds dumb. Something's affecting it because my focus is like clear. Ooh. What was that? Oh, well, I seen that. It looked like a shadow. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah, and then a step back. Yeah. Look carefully at this beam as highlighted by the yellow arrow. You will see that it will get darker as a shadow, as it appears, seems to go past it darkening out the beam. This is unexplainable. Well, that's 
Oh, it's blurry, it's blurry again. That's going to be interesting now. Okay. Can you zoom there? Um, Can you win out in that? No. The way I had to rig this up. Let me see. Only if you can. If you can, it's okay. Don't don't sacrifice for this for it. What are you feeling, guys? I'm so sick to my stomach. Yeah? Okay, we'll say goodbye. No, no, no. Y'all keep going. I'm okay. I got this. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, it's completely blacked out now. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yep, it's completely blacked out. See a little bit of the beam. A little bit of it. We were getting yep. a lot of beam there a few minutes ago. Yep. Oh, They're wow. looking for food. Okay. They're looking for food. The are food you... that they had is bad. The water that they had is bad. They're are... stuck on the bread. They don't like the bread because it makes them sick. What time period are you getting Vanessa? 1840. 18, 1840, 1845. Okay. This, this, it's yucky. It's yucky. They can't keep it down. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of other buildings here before this was built, you know, so let's check in to see exactly what. <coughs> the cattle wouldn't live. Cattle wouldn't live. They're staying hard when our cattle wouldn't live. No food, no food, no food, no food. We go again to the left. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I see it. I see it. Yeah, mm -hmm. look at that. I got it. Whoa. <laughs> I it's got just it. basically just people passing by looking down. Uh -huh. Yeah. Probably thinking, what the hell are you got? Down right? There. No, they're looking for food. food. But now I don't like the way you're sounding. I got to yeah. get you out of here. We I'm thank you for your time and for your energy trying to communicate. We leave you in peace. Let's get out of here. Come on, Vanessa. Vanessa. Come on. Let's go. <clears throat> go with Mike. Just be careful. Don't come down the steps. Later on, we decided to review the pictures that Vanessa had taken. We debated about these. After closer inspection, something was noticed about this photo right here. As you can see, the cropped areas that were zoomed in. We were unable to debunk these as dust or bugs. We also noticed that we were viewing some other photos that were taken in what we called the meeting room. This little fellow right here was very interesting. Not only was he seen right here, but as photos were taken, he seemed to have an interest all over the room. Not only was he seen here, but he was also spotted up here. The house that sits next to Spellman's the other night. Right. Me, Gwen, and Mike. And they were filming and, and having their own personal experiences. I had one that pretty much shook me to my core. Okay. That yeah. was the night I had the really, the eye stuff happen. Yes. Um, they kept telling me, the children that are, that are seen in the, the attic space of that house, kept telling me they were hungry, they were hungry, they were hungry. The bread was moldy. The bread was moldy. They couldn't bread eat. They were yeah. hungry, hungry, hungry. So I'm assuming that that has something to do with the famine. Getting ready to shock you. Okay. Me and Gwen go to clean our room today. Keep in mind, we've been here one week today. Okay. We go to clean our room today because we're leaving in the morning. And we're pulling out all the stuff, and, and I'm like, okay, I'm pulling out the bread because we can have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches again tonight, right? Because we just had them yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, the bread is solid mold. It was not yesterday. We took a picture of that. I have to assume or believe that's what they were trying to tell me because we've had activity in our room. Mm -hmm. There's been, that they were in the trash last night. Yeah, you woke up because you heard somebody going through the trash. Mm -hmm. In yeah. our room, the trash bag yeah. that we had in our room. 
Nothing was disturbed, but I could hear it plain as day. Yeah. What have been your experiences? Well, the kids house? is the attic is the main thing. Yes. In, the, in that, what do you call it? Um, the see kids coming, looking down from the attic space and stuff like that. I don't know whether it's family or not, but like I says, um, I brought you out, showing you the old workhouse. So generally, pretty much um, in the family here, what was happening is, is they were uh, um, landowners tossed you off the land and the kids were put into poor houses or workhouses and were pretty much worked to death. And your experience, remember you going by, you smoke smoke and stuff like that. There's big stacks there, plus there's a lot of, of mass graves, you know, for kids and stuff like that. There wasn't any you know, ceremony when they buried them there too. So yes, you could say that they are well, children, but children have been and noises in the attic, like mm -hmm. footsteps running across it. Stuff they like were that. very, very, very vocal. And I had a very odd occurrence. Um, when and I went to do a live feed after to kind of let people know how we're doing, what we're doing without giving too much away. And we're doing the live feed and I noticed that my right eye is turning in. That's right. I've never had an issue like that. I'm 47 years old. Never had any problems like that. And the, the people that are watching the live feed are noticing it. I'm like your, your eyes turning in that I, I can't explain. Um, what do you think? When, my God, I can't not look at it. And, um, a friend of mine watched that, <clears throat> excuse me, from England and he called me today. Was it today? Yesterday. It was yesterday. He was called yesterday. me yesterday. Um, when we were in Charlestown mm -hmm. and he uh, brought up a, an eye disorder that is really only prominent amongst children called strabismus, like strabismus. Um, and you, people might call it um, a muscular <clears throat> thing, but the research has shown it's been tied to the brain. Yeah. And one, like a lazy yeah. eye. Like a lazy eye, yeah. but it's not due to muscle. It's due to lack of proper nutrition or lack of proper development to the brain, which the one thing children have to have in order for the brain to develop properly is nutrition. Though it may have been identified by a different medical term during that time, today it is known as strabismus. Approximately 4% of the U.S. population has it common among those with neurological disorders like cerebral palsy, brain tumors, and Down syndrome. It's more common among children. However, people can develop it at any time throughout their life from any neurological medical conditions brought on from trauma like TBIs or traumatic brain injuries. While putting this episode together, something had occurred to me. Was this possibly just the children that we came in contact with at the house beside the Spelman Motel? You see, earlier in the week, we had already been to the mother and baby homes. Is this possible that maybe Vanessa had an attachment from one of the children of the mother and baby homes? It wasn't uncommon for these children to be what we would call today of special needs. Most people in today's time would see a child with an eye like this and think, well, that's really no big deal. Why leave them at a nunnery? Why have them institutionalized? But then again, you have to think about a time period where people were institutionalized for being an alcoholic, for filing for divorce, for hearing voices. Times have changed. Thank goodness they have. What I was experienced for last few years is I can hear a uh, voice of the kids mm -hmm. around the lobby. So I come out and check this, and there's no one in there. It happened for a few nights, and keep continuing <clears throat> up to a year or till Michael got that photograph and. All of a sudden they stop and after that I can hear the boys now from the ladies room mm -hmm. and I can hear some noise over there 
and I was thinking that they were moved, not mm -hmm. there not anymore. It, it's interesting because from what you've told us during our stay here, it isn't as if they're trying to be destructive. They're not trying to scare anybody. No. They're, you're simply bearing witness yes, to their activities. Just only like doing some activity, playing or... Absolutely. Yeah. Um, how did that make you feel the first time that you came across that? What, uh, well, what crossed your mind? Nothing. I didn't expect that someone over there, but I'm expecting it's a real person that mm -hmm. was in there. And when you found out it wasn't? No, I, I found out it wasn't. I said, a kid is in the lobby. And when I came out, there's no kids around there. Till, till Michael got this photograph and show it, uh, his brother showed it to me. And I said, oh my God, what I'm hearing is real. Absolutely. I've, <laughs> I've seen that photo. That's an amazing photo. Mm -hmm. It's That's a rarity to be able to capture something mm -hmm. like that. You have to understand how important it was for you to to hear that and sense that for him to take that photo. That's acknowledging that, that a presence is here, not for proof for anybody else, but for them. Ha, is this the only place you've ever had those type of experiences at? Oh, one time I see a person that died a few months ago, mm -hmm. and I see him he came, during the daytime. He came out there and go inside the motel and go straight to the toilet. And I said to myself, that boy was tied already a few months ago. So, really? And I follow him. I, I just would stay outside and look where he's going to. And he went to the men's room. And he never came out. And after a few months, I see him again in the town. I said, because people telling me to go to his funeral and have a look, see him. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, I was, I would just cry because I know him since he was a kid. Oh, wow. Because I was here for almost 20 years now. And he always knock on my door when I was living in the town, ask for cigarette, but I don't give him cigarette. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he always doing that every week. Once in once a week. Did anybody else in the town see him? I did. You did? Yeah. Wow. The night he says it was Stephen you're on about, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. The you night saw him as well? Was, yeah, I know. The night you came in and said it, <clears throat> I was in on the cameras and I seen the bathroom door open like wind. Mm -hmm. But I see I see nobody come in or go out. Out talking to Bert then he we're on about Stephen passed away that, that morning. Mm hmm and Bert was like, but I see him. He come in about 20 minutes ago, maybe. And I was thinking, no, no, no. He didn't come in here. He's dead. Dead since this morning. And it turns out that Bert had seen him come in and I seen the door open. What? So corroborating Absolutely. evidence. Yeah. Not that it's necessary. I mean, it's, you don't but have to But it's a real person. It's yes. a real person I see. It's a yeah. real human. Not, not like a blood or anything. Oh, of yeah. oh no, yeah. It's yeah. a real one. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The same person that I see him who drive him here. Mm -hmm. The same person I see him there, driving there. Crazy. See that that well, it does sound crazy to people that don't see them, but I see them in that form as well. Not all the time, but there have been times I've been sitting in my home doing a reading for somebody, and all their deceased loved ones just decide to come on in, and I've had them sit down on the couch next to me. I've been preparing for investigations in Virginia with with Gwen Clapper, and I've had a mother and two daughters sit on the couch next to me. The mother standing up, so it's to me this is and that's an honor, I believe, and I, and I I completely understand what you're talking about because not everybody would handle these types of situations with as as much grace and understanding as you have. It is it. It can be frightening. It can be frightening, but... Oh, for me, since I was a kid, I'm seeing a lot of things like that already in my, my life. That's wonderful. <clears throat> so not just here at Spelman's. No, You've no. had these situations Since I was before. a kid, okay. I, I, I was seeing a lot of things like that in my life. You Okay. 
Can you expand on that? Do yeah, you feel comfortable doing that? One evening, I see. I went to my uncle. I said, Uncle Rolly, I always see a bright eyes on the dark of your backyard. Ah, that's only a cut. I said, a cut is just that high. What I'm seeing is taller than me. <laughs> really? Yeah. Now, where would this have been at? Was this here in Ireland? Or no, was it's in the Philippines. In the Philippines? Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. <clears throat> Did you ever study the lore of your area or any type of stories associated no, with your uh, area to see if they coincided? During the time, we have a big land over there and there's a few people only living in that place. Mm -hmm. So me, I never get afraid to ghosts or anything. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I always go walk around the evening around the area that we live. I used to see a lot of things in the, in our place because this was camp of Japanese before. Okay. And a lot of people died in that place. Mm -hmm. And my dad told me, don't go out in the evening, just stay at home, you know, because we're seeing, my dad's seeing as well a lot of strange things in our place. But I like to see it, you know. <laughs> I like to see it with myself. Well, that's understandable, though. That's understandable, and they trust you enough to show themselves to you. So, uh, and, I mean, they can do it for many different reasons. They can, they can trust you enough because they know that you're going to understand it, or they know that you need to in order to progress because they know so much more than we do. Those that have passed on, they, they have a knowledge that we just don't have right now and that we need to get. And you're just a wealth of knowledge. I'm excited about this. I mean, Gwen, oh, where yes. you at, love? I'm right here. <laughs> Hop on in here. Ask him some questions. When, when you were growing up in the Philippines, um, your experiences um, that, you, that you were having. I had very similar experiences growing up in a small town called Cumberland County, Virginia, over in the Estates. The problem I came across was it wasn't acceptable when I would try to tell somebody something as a child that I saw something or you know would feel something. And a lot of times it was like, oh, it's just your imagination, this, that, or the other. Is it the culture in the Philippines? Is it more accepting of life beyond death? In your, in oh, your yes, opinion, of course, yes, they do believe in that. Yes, most of the people. So, did did you have um, struggles or, or problems with anybody listening to you when you would oh, see no, these the things? People believes on this kind of thing in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. People, there's a lot of strange things going on in the Philippines, and they believe on this kind of thing that. Life after death, mm -hmm. the spirit is, if you are not accepted upstairs, you will stay downstairs. Mm -hmm. You will be just like a ghost around the right. area. But if you accept upstairs, so you'll be up, up there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you will never go down again. But those people that not accept it from there, they stay on the ground. They just like a ghost or spirit on the ground. Okay. Philippines do believe in every, on that kind of so that would that would definitely <laughs> make for a more comfortable upbringing, at least yes. the fact that they're open to that. Because and there's some we've both strange that being also the here when one friend of mine, John Akanar, yeah. died, and I found him there, and somebody called a priest to to do some prayer for him. So when we finished the prayer. A big noise like an air come out from the window of the attic. And I said, I believe now that human body had a soul, like, you know, a spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go upstairs after we finish the prayer, the rosary. I can hear it. He's flying down to the window. The that if someone died in the Philippines, it takes nine days that he's around the, his body mm -hmm. he's around there and after nine days he'll be leaving his body and go somewhere of up to 40 days and the 40 days we will have Christian will have mass that praying for him to be accepted upstairs mm -hmm. and that's it but 
up to 40 days his soul his spirit is still around i have to ask you during that 40 days does the families of somebody who has passed have any special rituals or do they yes. try to communicate with them just, just and honoring a little bit of mass uh, mm -hmm. mass you know uh, prayer for him for do they try to communicate at all or do they feel like that is a window of time that they would be able yeah, to do so if they while you're to? doing the mass it's like speaking to him mm -hmm. okay okay yeah like he's you're talking to him mm -hmm. wow and pronouncing his name that he is not here anymore and he should go up there now and have a peace, you know. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. That is. It really is. Every single family had to do them kind of ritual. Mm -hmm. If someone's died, if it's Catholic, nine days, you have to pray that he's living now. He will go somewhere and then after 40 days, now you have your destination now to go accept it upstairs, you know, and have a peaceful life there. Wow, see, and to my knowledge, that is not how it is in the States. Yeah. You would not see that in the States. I've mm -hmm. never seen that in the States. No. Because to me, that showed an alternate viewpoint. <laughs> it showed, it also showed acceptance. It showed love, hope, understanding, mm -hmm. all the good things that we really need, especially during a time of sorrow, you know? Absolutely. That's the one thing that we've noticed in this town, what might be one of the reasons why you're drawn to it, even if you don't realize it, is that even, it doesn't matter if they're 10 years old or 100 years old, everybody in this town that we've come across for the most part has been unbelievably accepting of what we're doing here, even though it's primarily Catholic based. Mm -hmm. And in the States would be, would be, oh, we would be shut down. Oh, yes. And, you know, and I just, I, I just find it amazing. I, it makes me wonder if we're not the ones who are behind on on times. And, you know, it's... I think in some ways we are. You know, and it's it's refreshing to meet people like such as yourself and all from different parts of the world. And for you to be willing to share your stories and experiences with us has been tremendous. It's been a very needed insight. Not just for us, but for anybody who will be viewing this later. It gives us a better understanding. Because it doesn't matter how you hash it out, we're all connected somehow. We're all connected somehow. And um, I really appreciate you coming and sharing your stories and experiences. It's a hidden gem. It's a hidden gem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really it's is. It's a hidden gem. We have found many in this uh crazy trip to Ireland. <laughs> we have found many hidden gems and Barb, I'm happy to say you're one of them. Yes. Thank you for being part of it. You're welcome. Spellman's Motel, a true hidden gem. It's nestled in Balladrine, Ireland, surrounded by some of the best storytellers and walking history books you could ever find. The stories and memories are both captivating and educational. A haunted location? In our opinion, that would be an overwhelming yes, but we'll leave that up to you to decide. It is not up to us to convince anybody of an actual haunting, but ever given the chance, don't ever pass this opportunity up. We'll see you for part three on episode seven. Oh yes, there's more.